I'm John Anderson. Thanks for having us. Hockey is near. Amazing. Yeah, Barry Melrose is here. First baseball's postseason premiere. John, Tiger's not exactly roaring into Yankee Stadium over the final 50 games. A fair sample. Only the Devil Rays and Cubs had worse records than Detroit. Jim Leland points out, though, that the Tigers only won two fewer games than the Yankees did. Chin Ming Wong in a second inning jam. Maglio Ordonez on a hit and run trying to steal third. Jorge Posada throws him out. Nice tag, Alex Rodriguez. Yvonne Rodriguez still at bat, and Wong strikes him out. Next bat is Craig Monroe. Gets him to ground out to Derek Jeter. Wong out of the jam. Bottom of the second, A-Rod batting sixth. He hasn't batted sixth or lower since May of 96. Hits it hard. Lines out to second to Placido Polanco. Jason Giambi able to get back in time at first. A-Rod would go one for four. Top of the third, still scoreless. Runners in the corners. Polanco hits him a 6-4-3 double play. How about the stretch by first baseman? That's right. Now first baseman Gary Sheffield. To the bottom of the third, and all happens here for the Yanks. Johnny Damon, Trickler, gets by Nate Robertson. Derek Jeter started on 0-2 count. Now with the full count, Jeter comes through with a double. You know, his last four-hit playoff game was the Jeffrey Mayer game back in 96. Damon to third. Next batter, here comes Bobby Abreu. Abreu doubles to deep right center. Damon and Jeter score. Jeter would score three runs to pass Bernie Williams, most in postseason history. Next batter, Sheffield. Singles in the right center. That scores Abreu. Yanks enjoying a 3-0 lead. In steps Jason Giambi. No holes in this lineup, folks. Giambi, get out of town. His seventh career postseason home run. What a bottom of third for the Yanks and a 5-0 lead to the fifth. So 5-0. The Tigers try to get back in the game. Craig Monroe. If it's fair, it's gone. To dead center field. It's a 5-1 game. Man on second, 5-2. Sean Casey. Going to make things a little tougher and closer. Polanco scores. Tigers down 5-3. Yanks up 5-3 in the sixth. Abreu sneaks one through. He had four RBIs. That's the most in a postseason Yankee debut. Yanks up 7-3. Oh, yeah, start spreading the news. And then there's that Jeter fella. Going to tack on a solo shot of his own. Derek Jeter becomes the sixth player in Major League Baseball history with five hits in a postseason game. Well, you're going to fail more than you succeed at baseball. You know, that's the bottom line. But... Um, you know, we've been in this position a lot. We've been in a lot of postseason games. So you can't be afraid to fail. I mean, you always have to think positive. You know, uh, you're not always going to come through. There's been plenty of times that I haven't. But when I'm in that situation, I feel as though, uh, you know, I'm going to produce or, or come up with a hit or, or make a play. He just seems to just relish this uh, this atmosphere. <clears throat> he's He's been so... Uh, so big for us for 11 years here and and you know again I can't say I'm surprised but I mean he was I mean everything worked well for him tonight we don't obviously have the the lineup that the Yankees have that's not a secret but I think it's important for us uh, uh, for everybody not to try to be a hero every at bat and I think just make contributions because we just don't have that kind of firepower that little firepower they did have came in the form of Curtis Granderson and Craig Monroe, each at home runs for the Tigers, both their first in the postseason. Granderson, he's no Anderson. He recorded three hits in his postseason debut. But back to Derek Jeter, we told you it's the sixth five-hit game of the postseason ever. He's just the second to do so with a perfect five-for-five five night. Justin Verlander getting his first postseason start for Detroit. Derek Jeter, five knocks for New York in the opener. Game two of the Tigers-Yankees series. Beautiful sunny afternoon after Wednesday night's postponement. Bottom one, two outs, no score. Bases loaded. Justin Verlander. Alex Rodriguez, a big spot early. Verlander's first pitch, 101 on the gun. Second pitch, A-Rod fouls that one back. Third pitch after two gases. We got, oh, he's not fishing, just looking at the hook there. A-Rod down on three pitches. We go bottom four, Yanks trailing by a run. Johnny Damon, he's got experience as a postseason hero. And here, three-run Jack. First of the postseason, he's no longer a Red Sox. So come on out. We here at the Bronx and the stadium would like to cheer for you. Bottom five, two outs for Lander. A-Rod, that'll end the inning again with Uncle Charlie. 
goodness. Tough, tough, tough on A-Rod these days in New York. Top six, Mike Cusina joining, enjoying a 3-2 lead. Carlos Guillen, the Moose. Uh, sorry, park is actually open. Moose outside should have told you there. We're tied at three games. Second career postseason homer. The other one against the Yanks back in 2000. Bottom six. Verlander facing Robinson Cano. 0-1 pitch misses up and away. Jim Leyland, he's seen enough, doesn't like it. We're, we're not waiting. Preemptive pitching change. Out you go on the 1-1 count for Robinson Cano. Jamie Walker comes in. Bit unusual, but that's managing. And Walker in the at-bat gets Cano. The ground out into the 6-4-3 double play for Lander. You know what? I, I was behind the decision all the way. Last time the Tigers won a playoff game, by the way, Justin just turned four. Top seven, game still tied at three. Curtis Granderson, five for nine in the first two games of the series. That one's in the gap for three. Marcus Tim scores to give the Tigers four. Four, three, they lead. Can they hold it? In the bottom of the seven, Joel Zamaya comes on. He throws hard. Derek Jeter, smoke. Bottom eight, one away. Jason Giambi. That's 103 in the gun. That's ridiculous. Triple digits and then A-Rod. Yeah, we're not messing with the curveball here. More gas. Just, just give me number one at 101. Samaya, postseason debut. Excellent. We go to the ninth. Bottom nine, two outs. Yanks tying run on first. Todd Jones in to close it out. He's got a mustache. Johnny Damon, not anymore. Made him shave. <laughs> Off he goes. Fly ball. That stays in the park. 4-3 Tigers win. Series 1-1. Jim Leyland. Thoughts on the comeback? I hope, in my heart, that everybody realizes that we are a playoff team. And I hope that we at least prove that today. Tigers go to Detroit 1-1. Bob Holtzman by Leland breaking out that mid-count hook. The move clearly caught Tigers pitcher Justin Verlander by surprise. In the bottom of the sixth inning, in a tie game and with a 1-1 count on Yankee second baseman Robinson Cano, Tigers manager Jim Leland unconventionally pulled his starting pitcher mid at bat. The first time Verlander had been lifted mid at bat all season. I just didn't like the fastball before that. It was 92. And, uh, the one Matsui was hitting was 92. And I said, you know, this is it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my move now. I know there's a count on the hitter, but I'm going to make it right now. He knows a lot of times just to go on his instincts and what moves he thinks are right. And, you know, he thought it was the right move to bring me out and bring Jamie in in that situation. And um, obviously it was the right call. Three pitches later, reliever Jamie Walker got Detroit out of the inning. And by the next half inning, Leland's Tigers had the lead. We go to what he says because all year he's been, uh, he's gone against Grant a few times. It's been great. And then uh, he's been, uh, He's been a great calming effect, so, so whatever he says is the right move, and we go with it. Yankee manager Joe Torre says one thing he likes about Leland is he makes decisions and isn't afraid to answer questions about them. Leland says sometimes you go with what's in black and white in the scouting reports, and sometimes, like in game two, you go by feel. At Yankee Stadium, Bob Holtzman, ESPN. Thank you, Bobby. Yankees have only one big inning so far in the series. Scored five runs and six hits back in the third inning of game one. Outside of that, the Tigers' offensive output actually better than New York, especially Thursday because, you know, they're the winner. Baseball tonight, perspective on this game, this series a bit later here on the program. Center alongside Scott Reese, I'm Cindy Brunson. We start in Detroit where Alex Rodriguez shifts from hearing boo birds at the stadium to hecklers at Comerica Park. Yeah, A-Rod battling the elements, the media, and his psyche. The Yanks battling to avoid what many would call a shocking 2-1 hole against the Tigers. Game three in the Motor City, and Alex Rodriguez, well, seeing perhaps a friendly face in Kenny Rogers. A-Rod 10 for 19, 526 lifetime against Rogers, and Kenny's been awful in the postseason, 0-3 with an 885, but wouldn't you know it, the tables are turned. Top one with a man aboard, a-Rod to short, inning over, he went 0 for 3. Randy Johnson, first appearance since September 23rd. That didn't go well, this didn't go well. Sean Casey into right field, Carlos Guillen scores, and Abreu thinks he's got Pudge at third base. However, the call is safe. Hmm, Larry Vanover emphatically ruling safe, and I would emphatically say that was incorrect. But it stands, <laughs> and it's 1-0 Detroit. One out now. Men at the corners, Curtis Granderson. Robinson Cano, great flip, Jeter the turn, but no, not in time at first. Bud scores to make it 2-0. Another look, sheer poetry by the Yanks middle infield, but the relay not quite in time. So, and it's score runner at first now, Granderson takes off. They've got him picked off, but Giambi's throw is errant. 
and a runner is in scoring position. Same at bat, Placido Polanco up the gut, Branderson in, it is 3-0 Detroit. Runner at second now, nobody out in the fifth inning and Bernie Williams getting the start in place of Gary Sheffield because Bernie 353 lifetime against Rogers and he just misses a two run home run. However, inches, mere inches. Bernie, remember your all time postseason home run leader with 22, but not getting another shot. He goes down and then Rogers gets Cano pumped up, I say, is the gambler. Still a man at second. Johnny Damon right at shortstop. The Yankees have not advanced a runner or scored now in nine innings. We go to the sixth. Jeter right back at you. And the gambler comes up. Well, not snake eyes because he makes the play, but very, very close. Ooh. Wow. The gold glover self-preservation still gets the out. Bottom six. It's four and up. And Casey. You know, he was the mayor of Cincinnati, the mayor of Pittsburgh. Now he's the mayor of Detroit. Pudge in to make it 5-0, and the unit done after five and two-thirds, eight hits, five earned. Top seven, runner at third, two out, but Rodgers gets Cano to bounce out to end it. The Yankees staggering. 0 for 18 with men on base, a new playoff record. In the eighth, Rodgers gets Abreu, his eighth strike out of the day, and Kenny Rodgers' longest playoff outing ever helps the Tigers cruise to a 6-0 win. They take a 2-1 series lead. It's the fifth shutout in franchise history in the playoffs. At 41 years, 330 days of age, Rodgers the second oldest pitcher to win a postseason game. Meanwhile, the 3-4-5 hitters for the Yanks, Abreu, A-Rod, Giambi, they combined 0 for 10 with three strikeouts. Now, after the game, Alex Rodriguez with some startling commentary about his team. Quote, there's tension in this clubhouse. We've worked too hard this year to go home like this. That's not the Kenny Rogers I remember. He was phenomenal. Yes, but were his post-game words phenomenal? A lot of people may have had this like David versus Goliath or whatever, but uh, I think we all felt like we had a chance. and. Um, I just tried to make adjustments from what I used to do and try to show them a different guy because they'd shown that they could wear out the other guy. So um, I knew from the get-go how hard their lineup is to pitch to. And I know you can't fall behind on, in the count with them. Uh, that just invites trouble every inning. And I was just trying to be as aggressive as possible and match their intensity. Probably was a little more intense than I ever have been in a long time. I think for this one night, I think he got it all together, and he was probably as determined as you'll ever see anybody pitch a ball game. And I think that it just paid off for him. Sometimes you get so keyed up that it works against you. I think his adrenaline tonight worked for him. Kenny Rogers, I mean, he's pitched for a long time and there's a reason for it. And, you know, he was on a roll tonight. He kept us off balance, moved the ball around, excuse me, changed speeds. And you can see the fire at the end there with him. He just, uh, you know, he wanted to finish it himself. Well, suffice it to say, Rogers pitched the game of his life Friday night. He held the Yanks to a buck 67 batting average when there were two strikes. Buck 67 went ahead in the count, and the Yanks were 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. John Miller and Joe Morgan with the scoop from their vantage point at Comerica Park. Out of here, not just the Yankees, but the paper reports Joe Torre as well. New York Daily News reports that George Steinbrenner is expected to replace Joe Torre with Lou Pinella, currently out of work as a baseball manager. Now, Torre has taken the Yankees to the postseason every single year he has been their manager. He has one year left on his deal. It would pay him $7 million. Lou Pinella, a longtime George Steinbrenner favorite. And perhaps Steinbrenner says he's the man to light a fire underneath this $200 million payroll, if that's the problem. Some people believe it's more like pitching. Well, yeah, no ordinary Joe. Certainly not. A man of class, 11 seasons as Yankee skipper, four rings in all. 10 AL East titles, nine straight from 98 to 06, two-time manager of the year. And again, the most important sentence, he has reached the postseason every single year. He has been the Yankee manager. But for now, the New York Daily News says the Yankees expected to replace him with George Steinbrenner favorite, Lou Pinello.
Welcome in. This is Sports Center. John Butchergrass with Cindy Brunson. And yeah, start spreading the news. They're leaving today. Skipper Jim Leland admits he didn't sleep well before game four Saturday. He told the Detroit Free Press every time he closed his eyes, all he could see was Giambi, Abreu, and Jeter. Jason Giambi not even in the starting lineup for manager Joe Torre, and he moved Alex Rodriguez down to the eighth spot. ALDS game four, Yankees take the field scoreless in their last 14 innings. Jeremy Bonderman, top two scoreless, Bonderman. Gets Gary Sheffield, his first career postseason start going well for the kids. Sheffield 0 for 4, bottom two, still scoreless. Jarrett Wright deals, and Maglia Ordonez crushes his first career postseason. Jack Tigers up one to nothing. Two batters later with one aboard, Craig Monroe. Obvious rapport between bat and ball. Detroit up three to nothing on Monroe's second home run of the series. He led the Tigers with 28 regular season homers. Alex Rodriguez batting eighth in the Yankee lineup. First time A-Rod has hit that low in the order since May of 96 when he was 20 years old playing for the Mariners. First pitch the at-bat, A-Rod grounds out to third, 0 for 3 in the game, 1 for 14 in the series. Bottom three more issues for New York's $25 million man. Ordonez ground ball to third. That's an E5 because Sheffield can't handle the throw. After a Carlos Guillen single, they are on the corners for Ivan Rodriguez. Singles up the middle. Ordonez come on home. Tigers up four to nothing. Right, his day is done. Two and two thirds. He gave up three earned. Ouch. Top four. Derek Jeter steps in and Bonderman gets him swinging at the breaking ball. Top five. Sheffield can't check his swing. Later in the fifth, Jorge Posada take a seat. Bonderman perfect through five, throwing only 40 pitches, 32 for strikes. Top six, Bonderman still perfect with a 7-0 lead. Robinson Cano breaks up the perfect game with a single up the middle. Bonderman starts the ninth with an 8-1 lead. Sheffield. The line drive to left field and Monroe is there. Gorgeous. That's worth another look. It's a top play nominee. Bonderman geeked and why not? He leaves the game to a standing 0. Eight and a third. Five hits and two earned. All A-Rod, Johnny Damon, and Jeter can do his look on. Yankees down to their last out, down 8-3. to three. Jamie Walker into close, and Cano grounds out to end the ball game and the series. Tigers celebrate, and why not? Back in 1963, Jim Leland began his baseball career as a catcher in the Tigers system, and he is kissing everybody wearing a Tigers cap. Detroit carrying Leland off on their shoulders, bubbly flowing in the clubhouse. Players come back onto the field to celebrate with the 43,000 Tigers faithful. Game three winner Kenny Rogers popping the court, showering a policeman. Tigers become the first team since the 2000 Yankees to lose their last five games of the regular season and advance to the LCS. Again, 8-3 is the final behind Bonderman. The Tigers triumph for the second time in as many years. The biggest payroll in all of baseball gets bounced in the first round as Detroit advances to its first ALCS since 1987. Tuesday, the Tigers will play game one in Oakland. Bob Holtzman now with the Yankees post-mortem. Apparently, $200 million doesn't go as far as it used to. Even with a roster loaded with 13 All-Stars, and even with seven likely or potential Hall of Famers, the Yankees are left watching someone else celebrate for the sixth straight season. You don't hand out championships. You don't say who's going to move on uh, because you look at someone's lineup. You know, you have to do it. We didn't get the job done. They pretty much kicked our ass. You know, they pretty much dominated us in every facet of the game. So. Um, that's what the most frustrating part of this whole thing is uh, it seemed like we didn't have a shot from the get-go. They outplayed us, they outpitched us, there's not much else you can say. Since the Yankees last won the World Series in 2000, they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in superstars such as Giambi, Mucina, Johnson, Matsui, Sheffield, Rodriguez, and Damon, and have yet to win a championship. We were expecting to win a World Championship uh, when we showed up to spring training. Um, you know, a couple of days ago, we were even talking about how uh, great our offense was rolling right after that first game. And, uh, you know, three days later, it's all a, uh, uh, you know, it's gone. 
barring an off-season blockbuster deal, the Yankees may not look much different next season. Bernie Williams is a free agent, and the Yankees have options on both Sheffield and Mucina, but every other key player is under contract. In Detroit, Bob Holtzman, ESPN. Well, since the Yankees last won a World Series title, they've spent almost a billion dollars. And you could buy any NBA team or NHL team, all but five NFL teams, any Major League Baseball team except the Yankees. Of course, it does not buy a World Series ring. But the Yankees did not lose this ALDS. The Tigers won it, led by the man who filled them with spirit and confidence. I talked to the team before the game today about, you know, don't think about a celebration. Don't think about being 2-1 and one, or if you were 0-2 or if you were 1-2. and two. Don't think about if we lose, we got to go to New York. If we win, we get to stay home. Don't think about the crowd. Just go up there and concentrate on right. That's the, everything else will, will possibly fall in place if that happens. Me and Kenny, we talked before his start, and you know, we just kind of, I told him, I said, you, you go out and do your thing, and I'll do mine, and we'll take care of this. And Kenny did it, and I just had to live up to my words. It's kind of ironic, really, because in spring training, I said, when we played the Yankees, I said, you know, I want you to get to where we take the field like the Yankees take the field. There's a special air about them. There's a special confidence, not cockiness, but a special air. And I said, that's the level that we want to get to. And it was just kind of ironic that we got to play them and fortunately beat them in the playoffs. So Tuesday, it'll be game one of the rematch of the 1972 ALCS between the Tigers and A's. Testing is 34 years ago in game two. Shortstop Burt Campaneras was hit by a Laren Legro pitch, and it was on. Campy threw his bat at Legro. A's took a 2-0 series lead back to Detroit in game five. Reggie Jackson stole home to tie the game, tore his hammy, but his Oakland club won the game and the pennant. The A's and Tigers will face off in the ALCS for the first time since 1972. Good news for A's fans. Oakland not only won that series, but then took the World Series that season and the following two seasons as well. The Tigers won five of the nine games this year, holding the A's to a 229 batting average over those nine meetings. Game one again Tuesday in Oakland.